All right. Welcome, everyone. We're going to share this on Facebook, and we'll be back in just a moment. What is the temperature there, Mike? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, single digits, you know, kind of thing. So, yeah. <laughs> or at least oh, the, I God. should say the wind chill is. So we might we might be in the teens now, but it's with the wind chills. Yeah. Wow, oh, that's a warm day. For the past couple of days. That's awful. With it, that's yeah. Oh my gosh! Yes. Let's take in chips while we're here. I have a bunch of white light reflecting in my face. That's because I, I do have the window open, so everything, all the the snow is just you know reflecting light off the snow. It's crazy. That's good. We don't even have snow left. No kidding. It's just ice. Wow. Just ice chunks. It looks like the aftermath of an ice cap just kind of shattered about. Okay, I'm going to try to reshare this because um, it just kept spinning. So let's try this again here. There we go. It's quite a week on uh, social just this week with uh, a number of the features, yeah. different things that were rolled out. And yeah, I finally just got uh, Instagram live, uh, you know, my, rolled out to me now. So that was, you know, just did my first one this morning, actually, and, you know, playing with that a little bit. So Snapchat with the uh, group chat, 24 or 16 people, 24 hours. WordPress incorporating VR options. Yeah, we'll talk about that too. That's huge. Okay, yay, we got it to live stream. Hello and welcome everyone. We uh, on Facebook and on Huzzah here live. Welcome to the Magnet Marketer Show where our goal is always to help you become a magnet with your marketing versus being a bullhorn. Today we're talking all about social media predictions for 2017. What changes can you expect to happen in 2017? There's been a lot of discussion about that, so we're not going to try to come up with something new, but we're going to just filter in some of those discussions, pick out some similarities and some interesting ones to get your feedback on and what the, the social pros are saying are is going to be coming in 2017. So just a, a few short weeks away, what is that going to mean next year as we enter into the shift of social media and internet marketing as a whole? We were just talking before uh, the this started streaming here about just some things that have rolled out in the past week. Lots of changes are happening, so we're excited to talk about this topic today. But before we dig in, just a quick introduction for those of you who may not have met either of these two faces in front of you before. I'm Jessica Phillips with Now Marketing Group and the Relationship Marketing System, here to help you build long-lasting relationships with your ideal audience. To be found, be social, and build relationships. My awesome co-host, Mike Gingrich, Digital Hill President, co-founder of the popular apps, Waftio, Tab Site, and a founder of the nonprofit I Give Global, where he lives in Berlin. <laughs> lives and breathes with a philosophy of always being in common and always adding value. And also, most recently, published author of two books, right back to back. So welcome, Mike. Glad to have you here with me talking about this today. Hey, it's good to be here, Jessica. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's it's always good to, I, I kind of like what we're doing here. So it's, it's not an yeah. opportunity to just throw out some more stuff. There's a lot of people talking about what yeah. it is, but it's a chance to kind of, um, break down or give some commentary or thoughts on what they think is going to happen. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to let you kind of start it off while I blast this out and share this uh, video across some more social media pages so others can join in because I would love to get your guys' feedback on what you predict because this is going to be combined into a blog post and we'd love to feature your thoughts as well on this. Yeah, yeah. So, for example, like uh, we, we took a blog post uh, from uh, Firebell Mark. Firebelly Marketing, and uh, they, they put out their predictions for social media for 2017. Uh, they talked about, you know, kind of four areas, response time, uh, VR, micro-influencers, and Snapchat as key ones for them. And so, you know, when you think about that, so uh, response time, I think, you know, in regards to what do we expect, what do we anticipate, what, what does a business need to do? to be considered responsive. And, and so we've seen, for example, in the past year, you know, Facebook Messenger roll out mm -hmm. some tools with, with integrated with your Facebook page so that yeah. they're alerting, you know, you if how, if you're coming to their page, how responsive that Facebook page is to messages. And you can kind of get a, you know, a ranking based on that. And now, you know, then you could automate some messages, uh, those types of pieces. So, you know, uh, response time they're seeing is a key. And, um, you know, I think it's always significantly been a key. Any, any thoughts from you, Jessica, on that? Yeah, I think it's definitely a key. Um, one, just because others want to know, are you going to answer my question here or do I need to go somewhere else? You know, are you going to get back with me in the time that I need? Because maybe it's a quick buying decision question. You know, like, is this going to be here in time for Christmas? You know, um, and if you know they're not going to get back with you in a certain period of time, then you may opt to call them or go over to a competitor or somewhere else. So I think it's something that consumers on the front end, they want to know what to expect because the rule of thumb is, you know, they're expecting a response, to, you know, to a question within, you know, a 30 to 45 minute window at times. And whereas an email is 24 hours. So they don't, there's not a lot of room for grace and response times on social media as it is. So I think this is just helping set up that expectation, but then also rewarding the companies that have that quick response time. They let the let your customers know, hey, we value customer service right here um, at, online. And I think that's going to become more of the norm because no one wants to wait on hold and press six buttons just to get directed to the wrong department. They want quick access to the right person, you know, online, um, or at least to know how to get to the right person to answer their questions yep. real time. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I think that, uh, I mean, I've seen myself, you know, make decisions on uh, web tools that I'm using based on their uh, their response time, service experience. Yeah. And, you know, one of those features that you're seeing more of on a lot of e-commerce sites is, is you know, um, chat features. You know, so do you want to yeah. you want to call up somebody and and again, some of those have hours to them, uh, but the ability to immediately right there, you know. Get a hold of somebody. And within. Yeah. And I know this isn't necessarily social media, but I think on their web site, I expect that to grow as well, just because. Um, you know, the direct response time, people are looking for that. Um, and we've been on a couple of clients' sites, and they've had great success with just being able to answer the questions, you know, and quickly and move through that sales process a lot faster and more seamless because they're getting all their questions answered. So there's no lag time in their interest level because it's already peak. When they're reaching out to you, you already have their full attention. They're already engaged in that conversation. They're already interested. You know, so meet them where they're at right there. Yep, good point. That's the, you have their full attention when they are on the site, mm -hmm. taking some type of action. Can you see yep. the moment? Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So uh, they, they also outlined a couple other pieces there with with VR, sure. micro influencer Snapchat. So obviously VR mm -hmm. and virtual reality, folks. I mean, we're, we're seeing this. Huge. Huge. Yeah. Um, you know, I see it twofold. I mean, you see a lot of stuff rolling out, and um, you know, Facebook just announced this week uh, 360 live video. Okay, so that's that's a piece of that kind of a virtual reality in, in a sense there with with the immersive experience. Um, you may not that there's still a significant difference from 
that to a average small business utilization of those pieces. Uh, so, you know, I, I think we see a early adopter trend. So those in the social media industry and those in big brands are, um, you know, beginning to jump in, experiment, doing some things now. And you're seeing some of these pieces there. Uh, Facebook's helping some get started. You're seeing a little bit, you know, with National Geographic, those types of things. But, um, you know, uh, Bill's heating, obviously, is not quite there yet at this point in time. And, and but but what's what's that going to mean uh, down the pike? And, uh, you know, thoughts on that, on, on the VR, but also just the, the difference between is it time for our business or not time for our business? Mm -hmm. Right. I definitely think um, going back to the interview that we had with Kathy Hackle that it's definitely time for experimenting and seeing how it fits within your business. I think the early adoption and, and early adoption of social media trends as a whole and what's out there that brands are becoming more comfortable with trying things out because they know what it means to be left behind for the ones those times that they didn't act and at least try it out then they're trying to play catch up so i think brands are more opt, um, and more open i should say to testing things out and i think small businesses you know especially should start trying these things out just to see if it should be or could be a fit for their business with the 360 video as a whole that's definitely something that we do recommend because that's something you can even just put on your google map listing you know a tour through your office um or just um you know to highlight your business uh with a 360 video at least have one there see how well it goes you know see if people are utilizing it but think of how would my customer use this video and would it be valuable for them to see this in, in an immersive experience uh, versus just, you know, a traditional uh, what what's currently happening experience with the video. Just think about what that means. And uh, but I definitely think that small businesses especially need to be paying attention to virtual reality as a whole, because I don't think it's something that's going away. WordPress, you know, as you had mentioned, rolled out the integration of 360 VR um, right into WordPress. If they see that this is something that's big and if Facebook is seeing that this is something that people need to be paying attention to, it's definitely something that people need to be paying attention to. It's already being mixed and integrated into things that we're using every day as a part of our brands and our business. I think uh, it's definitely something that it would be wise if small businesses started paying attention to. Yep. And let's take a look at the, the, the quick and simple and easiest way to Mm -hmm. to get started is your phone and uh, the, the mm -hmm. panel yep. feature, you know, to get that, you know, kind of full effect and, and you can load those up. Obviously, if you if you take a pano now and you load that to Facebook, mm -hmm. um, users can, uh, on their mobile device, they can use their finger and, and go take a look around that picture, okay? So what we're talking about is that that's a simple step one and uh, mm -hmm. that's what now, if you have a WordPress site, you can take that pano and also add it to your website so maybe you're a uh, again i'm just trying to think of we did some um we just integrated some tours for a manufactured uh house mm -hmm. developer so they, they manufacture homes and they want to give the you know some tours and so they have a little software that can do that but but think about a, a pano in there so that you can you know and you could do it in a room and do do a 360 pano and then they can they can see that entire kitchen that way and easily yeah. load that up and if they have that wordpress site now and they want to load it to the to the blog post something like that mm -hmm. then they'd be able to do that so that's that's a, a simple just trying to, to break it down for the small business, how could I get started with this? That's one way right there. It's a simple starting point. Yeah, it's really cool. And even just for hiring, I think it would be kind of cool to have a potential candidate be able to take a, a sneak peek into what it's like in the office, you know, to see if that's something that they would want to be a part of. Um, I think that's an, an easy way right there is just like what you said you know, starting with your smartphone, starting with what you have or you're at right now, uh, but just paying attention to it. And I think that kind of leads us into the next piece of some of that, which is live video. I feel like that's been the theme for 2016. And I think it's just going to be a continual increase 
of obsession of live video and utilization of live streaming video as more sites opt in to have live as a capability on their platform. Most recently, Instagram rolled out live video. So you can start streaming live um, directly from your Instagram um, channel and, and others are getting notified um, as soon as you're going live on that. So all your yeah. followers are getting notified. Uh, it's just something, and Twitter as well. Yeah, Twitter kind of moving it from the, mm -hmm. I mean, using the Periscope platform, Periscope. but making it easier. No longer do you have to go to the Periscope app to do that. So integrating it within the Twitter app itself so that it's a seamless experience. Um, yeah, what you said with, with Instagram, taking that out to the masses now, and it's in stories. Mm -hmm. So there's a little unique because it's 24 hours and then it's gone. Uh, that, mm -hmm. you know, but so, so different ways, different experiences, but, but the whole concept is that there's an opportunity. People want to get to know the business uh, more real. They, they want to see, they want to talk, they want to listen, mm -hmm. they want to interact. And um, that's mm -hmm. a way to do it. This, this live thing that, uh, I mean, we, we saw this, just think about it. And, you know, it was a number of years ago with, reality TV and, and uh, just how uh, those shows took off the amazing race, the survivor, whatever, where they weren't professional actors, but it's just, you know, real people doing stuff. And you kind of got to watch in yeah. on that. And you know, so now, you know, Facebook's taking that to another level. And, and so now the others are trying to roll, roll that yeah. out. With Instagram is here, but again, what does it mean for your business and, and trying to, to break that down uh, again for the hiring? It might be that you know showing some of your culture, so showing some of the the team at work kind of pieces uh, for the you know manufacturers. It's the opportunity to kind of show the end uh, consumer a little bit about your process. You know the the quality that's going into that, uh, who somebody is that's you know putting this you know the, the panel in place in this area. You know whatever that is, that type of thing that can help make the connection from head to heart and, you know, from uh, commodity to personalization. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, just to kind of bring this together on just even the last three predictions that we've shared from others, all of these have an underlined tone to them, which is all building relationships and personalization of your content and how you're communicating. The messenger, one-on-one. -on -one. The live video, one-on-one. -on -one. The 360, you know, more directly, as much as you can be into the action. It's more personalized content is what is going to reign in 2017. The more real that you can get with it and the more personalized and relationship-driven that you can make your content, the better off you will be uh, by the end of 2017. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, and all of it. That, that just gives companies a confidence level to to want to do business with you, to to choose you. Mm -hmm. It's quite a good day to have the domain like relationship marketing. <laughs> Yay. And there's a few others in there too. <laughs> but uh. But yeah, so some other predictions that were mentioned um, in these reports, and we're gonna give credit to the individuals that have published them. So um, Inc. rolled out an article on um, the trends to watch in 2017. I'm just gonna quickly list a few of them and then we'll kind of go through uh, any comments that we have on that just so we can get through a few others that have been mentioned. Um, they said that um, one, your Facebook feed is going to be uh, ruined by ban, uh, excuse me, your Facebook feed is going to be um, ruined by banner branded videos. So they're um, predicting that banner videos are going to come out um, over the videos um, and that people are going to start advertising on the live streaming videos. They also predict that big brands are going to feel the heat and start using video um, better and more often live streaming video. Um, and they said that brands are going to spend a lot more time on social media, uh, trying to figure out how to socially sell on social media. And then the last one that I'll mention from this article, um, cause there's lots of them, <laughs> but they say uh, Twitter is going to find its pivot. Um, and they said that there are rumors of a purchase by Google this past year, 
but they haven't heard much on this, but they, um, they feel that Google is going to purchase them. Oh, I do want to mention actually one more on this report. It is LinkedIn will become the power player by the end of the year because it's of those one-on-one -on -one connections and brands trying to figure out how to turn social into ROI. Um, that's This is all predictions um, from an Inc. article that I will share both here in the live stream um, and in the comment section of Huzzah. So uh, we get to comment on this, right? Um, yeah, definitely, please. I think they're all wet with a LinkedIn prediction. Uh, yeah. That's just my thought there, and I just feel like couldn't have a pivot big enough for LinkedIn to become a go-to. Um, yeah. It's just, I agree. it's there to have some uses, but it's it's not leading edge, cutting edge, and, and you would have to do some major stuff to have me spend volumes of time like I'm spending on some other platforms yeah. on that platform. Exactly. It's one of the ones that is checked the least. Now, granted, it does have huge ROI value to it, but it is checked the least because if you think of the audience there, it is professionals that already don't have enough time in their day. So they're going in there at most, at most, usually like once a day. Now, I love LinkedIn. I, I use it all the time, but I'm standing with you. I don't think that prediction has merit. I'm not saying anything against this guy because, you know, we all have right to our predictions. But I still feel that Facebook is still going to be leading the pack because they're constantly evolving. They're constantly listening to both brands and personal um, individuals that are using it. And innovating and adding things that people are asking for and the amount of time that we're spending on Facebook is grown yeah. over the years even though there's more social apps that are out there our time spent there has still continued to increase yeah. so I still see that they're leading the pack especially as it relates right now currently to live video I do think that there will be some attention drawn to Instagram on their live video um, just because of the nature of Instagram and that people love hanging out there as well and um, you know the snapchat people are going to you be using the snapchat video and uh, live video when that's rolling out in the future which could happen yep. <laughs> you yep. know, on another level no one no one has spoken about this and, and maybe it's just it's too early with <laughs> Instagram live ro ro rolling out but um, I think since you know Instagram is owned by Facebook that you're going to see the ability to go live together simultaneously on, on you know on both platforms mm -hmm. i think that uh, you'll have a one click yeah. option to go live on facebook and instagram i think it only makes sense that they've rolled out a number of integrations with with this year in with you know the ads uh, you can manage your instagram ads within facebook ads manager all those kind of things so uh, I just think that would make sense that you would see that coming out. Yeah. Here's my prediction. I see a lot of these social media sites geared to creating small groups and pools of people. Snapchat just rolled that out with group messaging and um, group kind of stories. I was part of that yesterday, um, messing around with that. Instagram has that um, where you can create small groups of individuals and communicate. You know, Facebook has that. What I see happening and for brands is that they're going to create small pockets of people, both with their team, with more of a VIP section, and with their influencers, create small groups and or maybe even training, like how they're, you know, you're doing Facebook groups now for training. I see those kinds of things growing and evolving. The more you're joining a community within a community within these groups and that live streaming communication is happening. So these influencers and these brands and their brand kind of micro influencers are going to be able to build deeper, faster connections with pools of people. It's almost like get an inside VIP access to my group so we can talk all the time. And when I go live, you're directly a part of this small community. I see that as one of the big things that's going to start evolving in the way that we're communicating. So it's not going to be one to many. It's going to be one to a close knit group because it's a way to beat the algorithms for them. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. To, to, mm -hmm. to bring that 
down to a tight group that that has mm -hmm. interest and wants to engage interact with them yeah um yeah coming back to uh, the article that you mentioned here and twitter is going to find its pivot might be bought by google that type of thing um you know i think that um it's too early i think that yeah. it wouldn't be a good move um things kind of die largely in the Google vortex if they purchase there and, yeah. and they haven't been really super known for massive innovation so um, I think that um, I think Twitter's still on a kind of a little bit of a stalemate just because I mean you think about the last six months you think about the innovations that Instagram Facebook and snapchat have rolled out and I, I can't count anything innovative. They've, they've only done this little catch-up mode to say, now, yes, you can do live video on Twitter. And it's, they're, they're behind. Yeah. You know what I see I, or could happen? And this is just throwing it out there, just completely opinion-based, nothing, <laughs> nothing uh, factual about this. But I could see, because I know Salesforce was in the running before, yeah. I could see Salesforce going in for that because of some of the momentum they've lost in, from Slack. I mean, I know Salesforce is so much more than the, like what Slack offers, okay. but for communication and internal teams communication, you know, there were several small businesses, including us and our marketing group, that were using Salesforce primarily for internal and client communications. And I feel like Slack has grown a huge chunk of that business. Um, not to say that they've pulled it away from Salesforce, but they've definitely grown there. Um, and I feel that Salesforce, if they did make this move, could be a way to win over business because it could be Twitter's customer service approach, and that's what it's known for, you know, on that platform. And yeah. could be also a way for teams to kind of direct communicate in a way that they're integrating it, you know, could integrate it together with their software. Okay. Yep. Just yep. The opinion there, but <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else on comments on what this gentleman no, from we, Inc. We're said? Keep, and this we're is keep moving. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nick Cole was the uh, gentleman that wrote that article from Inc. Okay, so Jeff Bullis, um, he's talked about chatbots that are coming. Um, I'm just gonna run through his predictions real quick and then we can comment again. So Jeff Bullis, again, um, his 10 predictions. Live streaming video, what we've talked about, definitely he's on board with that prediction. He said chatbots are changing our conversations, which if you're not familiar with chatbots, they are a conversational agent that is designed to stimulate in intellect, uh, and or excuse me, an intelligent conversation without a human being being present. So you you can, for example, um, message Disney and ask them questions or whatever, and they will respond back, or a computer AI will respond back um, to your questions to keep kind of more conversations going as well. Um, and you will know, they will, you know, it clearly identifies and identifies itself as a chatbot um, when it has that kind of two-way conversation back and forth. Um, but Mark uh, Zuckerberg, you know, is introducing the chatbots into Facebook Messenger um, now and more and more uh, applications are going to be available on Messenger. He predicts expiring content, which I could definitely see this, um, and we are seeing this now. Yeah. Social media consolidation, uh, meaning that brands are going to start, you know, bringing it together and see what sites are really working for them and try to be better at those sites versus trying to uh, spread themselves thin on so many. Um, organic social traffic gets harder and harder. Uh, yes, and automation moves to the mainstream. So inbound marketing is moving to more people who are like, hey, what is this? And it's kind of funny, I was listening, uh, not to derail, to a podcast yesterday, and people were talking about this new innovative thing that they were doing, which is asking people to subscribe after their podcast um, to get a uh, to get a value added offer and i'm like yes this is inbound this is what we've been talking about yeah. um and then the last one is that ai artificial intelligence and um virtual reality become something that others are starting to peek into and take advantage of yep yep this is all jeff bullis here oh i think uh, a lot of good uh, pieces there and mm -hmm. 
uh, you know, a number of things that others have said. Um, anything that jumps out to you from, from his uh, thoughts there? I like that he's mentioning those um, micro moments that are disappearing. Um, I think it's creating this sense of urgency. And I think even that's even happening with expiring content, even on websites, you know, where you're saying, hey, this is only going to be up for so much time. Um, and I think that for the social media end of things, that people feel more comfortable sharing something that they know is only going to be out for 24 hours. Hmm. You know, I feel like they have, uh, I think that's why Snapchat has the audience that it has where they've grown up with digital and they know that um, what they write online is written in ink and they love their small communities where they can share whatever's on their mind, you know, um, versus Facebook is definitely more polished, best version of your life usually. Yeah. Um, I feel like Snapchat, it's it's your life, you know, and Instagram, it's your life, Instagram stories, and people are more amped to share more on some of those micro moment opportunities. And where I know Facebook is trying to, um, and they have in Messenger, but introduce those micro moments as well. You know, I think there's, there's definitely some merit there because I think that, uh, you know, there's times where I find myself kind of making a decision. Okay, you know, I want to, I want to share this. Where do I want to share this? Where, where do I want to go live, post a video, that type of thing? And and I'm kind of subconsciously making some decisions about uh, what what audience do I think you know on this? Because when you and, and I have, I've I've shifted some pieces there to to Instagram, and largely maybe because it is a little bit more. Uh, uncut and I know that you know a story is going to go away in 24 hours kind of thing and yep. and so that's that's it you know, it's a good reflection and, I, and I'm kind of just analyzing some of my own uses that way now yeah 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 and another one that um, I think is going to be important that it wasn't mentioned in this article but it is influencer marketing I think that whole word of mouth people are trying to see how they can try to reverse engineer the word of mouth to world of mouth, you know, with online reviews and with individuals preaching about their brand and to grow that brand advocacy. I think that there's going to be more push on, you know, either community managers or um, influencers or even micro influencers um, or social media advocates. I think people are going to try to find people that they can connect with and build alliances with in order to strengthen their brand reputation and get that word of mouth spreading online faster. I think big brands are going to partner with small brands, you know, um, small brands with other small brands and kind of form alliances, if you will, to try to get more of those influencer type experiences online. Okay. Okay. Now, what do you think? Cause I, I think this is always a challenge right now with mm -hmm. the, the gap point between what how some businesses still function and, and use the web and some of these leading edge tools. I mean, there is just a yeah. a you, distance, yeah. isn't there? I mean, it's just just yeah. massive in that because I, I was just thinking of a of a lead that came into our website the other day, and um, I mean, this is a manufacturer uh, in Oklahoma kind of thing, and and. I mean, they they found us the old-fashioned way. They're not they're not looking on social media or something like that. You know, they were they were doing a, a Google search, um, happened upon a blog post on our website, read about it, that connected with them, and they made a call. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's yeah. that's there. There's still a lot of that model out there, which still comes back to content marketing. You know, having the, yeah. the right articles out there, and that had yeah. nothing to do with likability or videos or um, virtual reality or blah, blah. I think social that's media. Still, yeah. I think that's the very most important thing, honestly, is what's on your website. I know we've been talking about social media predictions, but how you okay. gain this momentum. You just yeah. Right there. yeah, I know we're talking about social media predictions, but I think that's how you gain momentum for what's already built on your home base, which is your website. If you don't have the foundational principles there of good content, an easy to navigate website, an easy to content 
contact with and build in a lead generation, you know, strategy on your website, you're just going to be maybe attracting a lot of people with no way to service them. I definitely think your foundation needs to be built first and foremost before you do anything else. Um, so definitely having, like you said, the blog, the right content there that speaks to your potential audience. And then also the opt-in forms or whatever, so you can nurture and content upgrade, you know, if, if they're on it, reading your blog and, you know, you want to give them that next step in understanding that, they would, you know, again, fill up their name and email address to then get deeper dived in that relationship before they would reach out to you. That was awesome that they did it right off the, the gate with the first touch, but that's usually not the norm. So building an email list of individuals that you can nurture because social is high and low, yes. peaks and valleys, yes. and email, you know, is going to be more consistent with the average open rate of anywhere from 10 to 20 percent. No social media posts are getting, you know, 20 uh, percent. I should say most of them are not getting 20 percent reach. So you're still best bet is with email on your website, not to derail that. But I think that is exactly the foundation that you need to have before you even worry about some of the, the other social media things that are out there. Yep. Yep. And so, so I'm with you. And, and of course, I mean, I think even one of the predictions talked about this, but about mobile first, I mean, that's just a reality mobile first on the web. Yeah. And that means your Google, the, the, you know, the search engines are lining that way to rank your site based on whether the, you know, content uh, works well on a mobile device. And so right. that's, that's important. Make sure your website's mobile responsive. And that, that's not a, that's not a prediction folks. That's a necessity for 2017. That was prediction in 2014. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, that that's here. So you got to make that happen. Uh, so that people can consume your content. I just totally agree with your, your website, that home base, that's where the content lives. The other pieces yeah. are to amplify that, to be able to, to share about some of the great content you do have, to talk about some things and point back to the website, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and taking that way. And that's where the, then you have to have that drip and all those types of pieces ready to go. Your, your lead capture, I think that that's still one of the biggest core sites is that lead capture, that having someone in action so that you can stay in touch with them. Uh, so, so that, to me, is a critical piece. Now, uh, how, how about related to this, though? It's kind of using mm -hmm. the live video, using the video, using the social media to find others. I think there's a, another level of partnership in business that can take place. Okay. So, um, you know, we're, we're examples of this kind of thing where, where we you know, are in different right. states, um, but we collaborate and we're, we're finding ways to solve uh, client, you know, needs together, that type of thing. And, and I know what your expertise is. I know that you know, we don't do video. And so I want to bring you in for that piece when they're up for need for video and, and you got me in with that um, um, MLS IDX feeds for some of the mm -hmm. advanced web stuff that, that someone needs and those types of pieces mm -hmm. so it's it's using some of these relationships that because mm -hmm. because you will have business that will trust you because they know you you know and I will have business that will trust me because they they know me but not, might not be what we offer but we can we can bring mm -hmm. A solution for that customer, that client, uh, together, and, and I think social media helps us to do that. I mean, that's how you and I stay in touch. We communicate, and so we collaborate that way. So it's another tool that amplifies business through the partnering. Absolutely. Yeah, I, th I think sometimes yeah. we skip over that, but but I think that's important to take a look at that, that we use it for collaboration. But it's still, it's like that. It's the word of mouth referrals. You know, it's it's just not happening. Everything is about the relationships. Yep. Yeah, it comes down to it. It's just, uh, it's not, Everything. it's not, we're not, we're not uh, saying, hey, you know, I was in the coffee shop talking to Joe and you need to go down here three blocks to talk with him. I mean, it's a little, it's further out, but it's the same concept, you know, where mm -hmm. I was talking to Jessica on Facebook Messenger. We were chatting and, you know, um, she was talking about this need, you know, so we connected and da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly how it works. We, we said we weren't going to give our own yeah, predictions. So final. <laughs> yeah. So any final um, predictions, Mike, for the that we didn't mention? Or any final thoughts? Yeah, for I mean, those entering into twenty seventeen. I just I think that 
um, when it comes back to, I mean, expect rapid change again. I mean, I, I can even imagine mm -hmm. live 360 video um, eight months ago, you know, and so expect rapid change. And I think that uh, you do need to be aware of these things. You need to experiment with some of these things. You need to, to shore up your foundations, uh, first and foremost, with your content, with your lead capture strategy, and uh, you being a, having your website mobile ready, but, but you need to kind of begin experimenting with some of these finding useful ways to, to touch. Is this relevant for my business? Can, can, this, can I experiment with this? So, so it's, it's just important to stay in touch. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I will echo that. And I just say focus on how you can create more personalized experiences, both on your website and on social, more personalized experiences. Um, looking at the technology that's out there to do that, whether that's live video, communicating in groups, micro moments, it's more VIP access, whatever that is. Focus on better experience overall um, and building re relationships online. And then focus on quality content that you're pushing out to try to beat the algorithms. And then fo start with an end in mind of where you want to get in 2017. So start there. What are your goals? That'll help you refine and trim down where you may just be wasting and spinning your wheels out there um, with some of the other social media campaigns and things that you've tried. Yep. But just align with your goals and get hyper-focused on that in order to succeed in 2017. The rest of the stuff will come in. There'll be lots of shiny objects. But make sure that you're aware of them but you ask yourself does it align with my goal and where I'm trying to get in 2017 so. that's right on okay. yeah perfect so thank you so much Mike and thank all of you for joining us today as we have some social media predictions for 2017 and we'll share those links from others that we pulled some of their predictions from um, if you have predictions of your own please mention them below we'd love to include those in our blog piece when we follow up on, on this along with the the other predictions that we've listed out so we thank all of you for joining us for magnet marketers our goal is always to help you become a magnet with your marketing versus being a bullhorn hope you enjoy the rest of your week and that you're in warmer weather than both of us right now there you go. There you go. <laughs> we will see you next Tuesday Tuesday um, at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard standard time on magnet marketers and then we may be taking a two week uh it's christmas and then new year's will break but we'll be ready to uh, dive in to help you reach those 2017 goals right after that so enjoy the rest of your week you, you guys good see you Take mike care. later <laughs> bye